There's a new kind of recruit joining Britain's armed forces, a new breed of operator brought in for a fight most of us will never see. These young cyber warriors, including some teenagers, are bringing their valuable skills to defend our nation's digital front lines. This was their graduation. They are the first cohort on the MOD's new Cyber Direct Entry Scheme. It's aimed at attracting people who they say wouldn't normally have considered wearing a uniform. 26 young men graduated and they start their military careers as corporals in the RAF and leading hands in the Royal Navy. Their backgrounds include previous careers as IT technicians, software developers, computer scientists and hardware specialists. I think it's a, it's a totemic moment for defence where we have uh, adapted the way in which we're bringing people into the armed forces uh, in order to suit um, both the opportunity that of bringing different people into our force, uh, also adapting against the threats that we face to ensure that we've got um, the capability we need. And these young people today um, represent a, a kind of new breed of operators coming into defence they're going to help to keep, keep the nation safe. The Cyber Direct Entry Scheme aims to bring in people you wouldn't expect to see in the military. The MOD says it's well known that the cyber sector has a workforce including a substantial percentage of neurodivergent people. They say they embrace neurodiversity and recognise that they can often see what others cannot. Starting salaries are over £40,000 with the potential to earn up to an additional £25,000 in skills pay. This is in addition to pay increases from promotions and time served. The entry route sees basic training reduced from 10 weeks to around one month, after which recruits undergo three months specialist training. I think the, the great thing about these graduates is it really is showing that we can, we can attract a different type of people um, into our force and uh, and perhaps the lessons of the Second World War um, when we saw people like Alan Turing come and serve the nation that was a way of showing that people from a whole variety of backgrounds who who perhaps would never have thought um, before the outbreak of the Second World War that they would work in national security well uh, this I think today is a, is a small step in but an important step in showing how we can open ourselves up as a force in order to make sure that we can use the amazing talent um, that resides in the UK. This is all part of a bigger plan with the creation of the new Defence Cyber and Electromagnetic Force, DSEMF, led by Air Vice Marshal Tom Ashbridge, that's been established as part of the Strategic Defence Review. It's under the command of Cyber and Specialist Operations Command, CSOC. The MOD says the aim of this new force is to safeguard military operations in cyberspace, bringing together military personnel, defence companies and cyber teams. The graduates will be working for DSEMF and when major threats to defence systems come through, they will be on the digital front line trying to stop them. DSEMF HQ is based at MOD Corsham, but the size of the force is classified. There have been more than 90,000 cyber attacks on UK defence over the last two years alone. So far in 2025, the UK faced 18 major cyber incidents categorised as highly significant with the potential to seriously impact essential services. This is an almost 50% increase on the previous year and the third consecutive annual rise. And in the retail and car manufacturing sectors, society has felt the impact of when hackers win. So in a bid to bolster cyber defences, that's why the MOD has changed recruitment rules. As standard following phase two training, the cyber graduates will serve a minimum of three years, but will be expected to serve six years while they develop their technical proficiency further. The MOD says cyber operators recruited through this scheme will not be required to serve in dangerous environments and there's no weapons handling involved. However, many of them may well be required to deploy. We're not, we're not talking about people that will only sit at home um, or sit in, in, in a UK base um, on a keyboard. You know, these people may have to deploy in support of the uh, of wider forces and will make sure that whatever level of training they require to be able to operate in whatever area they are, we'll give it to them because our primary um, purpose with our training is to make sure people are, are safe 
um, wherever they are, but also that they're capable and able to, to ensure that we get mission success. The next cohort will include the Army, which the first did not, and is open to people aged 18 to 39. Each graduate has had to undergo a high level of security clearance, known as developed vetting, before being allowed to take on these highly sensitive roles. In response to the first cohort of cyber experts graduating, some have questioned the decision, asking why these skills aren't already in-house and concerns have been raised about a lowering of standards. There will be pressure on all of these new faces to prove their worth. Will one of them become the next Alan Turing? With the high levels of attacks on MOD systems, every day there'll be plenty of opportunities to try. Thanks for watching. For more from BFBS Forces News, like and subscribe to our channel.